sealed. And uh, there is this little uh, orange sticker here which sits over the lens assembly. And um, you'll, um, yours will be in place. So when I take this out of the box, don't worry. So, um, so the case has changed. I, I, the material looks very, very different. Bina, you opened the one at, you know, uh, at Neef with us, which is kind of a more sort of a kind of a, I don't know, coarse feel foam to this. These are these are yeah, really like nice. That. Yeah, it was more like that pressed together foam. This is more of a, a, yeah. like an inject, like a like a printed foam or something. It's it's yeah. much more yeah. And this is very similar to the uh, same style cases that the AM3 is using now as well. It's got the C Star logo in here, and uh, got a carrying handle um, on the top here, which is actually really, really nice. And uh, a couple of catches, and uh, that uh, really up. When you open it up, you can see this kind of I don't know what kind of foam it is, but it's actually really quite dense. So. Uh, this is, uh, when you get it, uh, this is what it's, uh, trying not to tip it out onto the floor, which would be a mess. Um, the case uh, carries, the, obviously carries the C-Star unit, also the uh, tripod, and um, the, the reel fits quite nice. It's quite lightweight. It's only two and a half kilos. What's that, Tyler? Five pounds, something like that. Five and a half so, pounds. Um, yeah, so... Um, here we go. Let's take out what you get in the box. So obviously you get the the actual C uh, Star unit. You get the uh, little uh, tripod. Uh, there's a uh, USB C cable in there, which we'll talk about. Um, a set of uh, instructions, safety guides, warranty cards, etc. And this. And I think this is what a lot of people have been very very curious about, and also. Um, there was this uh, little um, uh, media um, competition that went away uh, a few weeks ago, which was basically uh, how to share the filter so that, you know, basically it's included. So um, this has been really, really nice. And if you've seen the Sea Star forum um, on Facebook, you'll have seen some of the pictures that Bina, or TJ, and I have taken with, uh, with that filter. Um, so that is pretty much what you get. So let's let's have a quick look around the C Star for a start. So um, C Star is a, a folded design. It's a an F five refractor, fifty millimeter. It is a triplet. Um, it is a folded design, which means that the optics um, path runs um, down the case around uh, 180 degrees and back to the sensor at the uh, top end here. So um, it is actually bent round. Um, inside there is a um, motor for the autofocus. So um, that drives the uh, ca camera back and forwards. There is also a, uh, a filter slider drawer. And this where there's also been some changes um, from Neef. So one of the big feedbacks that uh, TJ, Bina, and I, and you, you guys too talked about was um, the ability to add a uh, narrowband filter, uh, a dual band filter. Um, and that's something that ZWO took on board really, really quickly. Uh, the filter drawer has gone from uh, basically a UVIR and a dark filter to a UVIR dark and a, a dual band. Uh, narrowband filter. Now, um, the filter itself is, I think, I think it was 20 nanometers and HA30 and S2. I've got, if I've got that round the right way, uh, maybe Bina can check the uh, specs on that for us while we're on. I think it's uh, 20 and 30. Um, if you have a look at the C stuff forum, you'll see some of the uh, narrowband um, images that TJ Bean and I have taken from uh, from that uh, dual band filter. They've been really impressive. Actually, it's a really really nice filter, and certainly the images I took of uh, uh, Etta Carina and the Carina Nebula here using it in five minutes 
was outstanding. Very, very clean, very, very sharp images, nice contrast. Really surprising because it, it's not exactly the you know narrowest filter in the world. However, you need to remember that we're only doing 10 second exposures here. So if you don't want to be exposing for hours, then that that's, um, you know, that's probably a, a trade off. Now the arm here, we'll, we'll have a look at this when we get going. Um, in the bottom, there is lithium battery. The lithium battery is, it is replaceable. It's on a little uh, jumper and cable and um, has a little uh, battery, um, uh, battery box in the bottom here that you can actually take the screws off and actually uh, actually replace and uh, that um, that's got a runtime of up to six hours now I say up to because um, one of the things that the C star does have it does have a dew heater in here as well to protect you from dewing up on uh, on those cold wet nights I have to say I have run this um outside last week and it was very very damp and i ran this outside for a few hours um when i brought sea star in it was absolutely covered in ice it was sparkling the tripod was sparkling and so was the case but there was no dew at all on the uh, on the lens assembly you're probably not having to worry about that right now bina you know to worry about the <laughs> you're on mute No, it's definitely uh, soaking up up <laughs> here. It's gotten a little, uh, yeah, a little moist at night up here. So, and then yeah, and we were yeah, we were minus, yeah, we were minus no three this week. So it was pretty cold, but yeah. So uh, the dew heater in here is really really good. That works really really well. Um, on uh, the other side here, uh, we have uh, the power button and uh, also the uh, battery uh, level indicator as well. This also um, uh, glows as well when you're charging the battery and give you the kind of indicator of sort of how much battery charge is in there. And then the button here actually flashes depending on the mode and um, you'll see this sort of pulse. What did we call it, Tyler? Breathe breathing, wasn't it? That was like, we were trying to work what out G what the was breathing what LED was. Breathing was. lights. It's like, what? <laughs> Yeah, the breathing LED, the breathing light. We actually wondered if it was something in translation, but this kind of power button so does sort of sort of pulse very very quietly. Um, not too bright. They're not so bright that when you're outside in the um, in the yard or out in the paddock that it's uh, uh, blindingly bright as well. And um, the other little um, option here as well is that you've got basically a uh, USB-C connector. And uh, the USB-C is where you charge it. And also plug in a uh, laptop and uh, reach the uh, drives on the EMMC memory the same way as you can on like um, ASI Air Mini and um and uh, the asi air plus for example um also on the bottom is a a, a three eighth um screw hole for um a tripod and uh, we'll talk about that in a second and then there is a, a reset button here for uh, bluetooth and uh, and wi-fi and um that's pretty much the unit itself it's a, a, I have shown this off to a few people, and uh, we had this out at our observatory on um, on Friday night. Comments were was like, "Wow, really, really nicely engineered. You know, everything is firm. There is no creaks. It's really fits together. There's no gaps. Finish is really, really nice." And um, I, I think for the price, it's it, it, it's absolutely fabulous. Everybody I've shown to so far just falls in love with it. I took it into work on Friday, set it up on the balcony in the office and did some solar imaging. And um, yeah, the guys were, uh, guys were really, really impressed with it. So that's, uh, that's that. Um, the little tripod is basically, um, it's the same version as um, uh, those supplied like the TC40 that we get with the um, AM series mounts. Um, it's got a little uh, bubble level um, on the top here. However, the um, C-Star does have a digital level inside it, and uh, that'll help you. There is a little option within the uh, within the app as well. 
And um, uh, the great thing about this is that um, because it's a 3 8 thread, you can also just put this on a straight camera tripod as well if you want to get something um, off the ground. Um, for example, on an outreach night, you could actually take this and actually put it on uh, on, a, on a different tripod. And um, let me just uh, see if I can do this without um, ending up on some, uh, you know, outtake somewhere of me dropping a brand new C Star over the front desk. Tyler, stop that. That's not nice. You, you, <laughs> you'll make a mockery of me. I'll never live that down. Um, so that's uh, the, the, the legs do extend. So if you want it uh, taller, you can actually extend it uh, a little bit uh, further. Um, I think it's about 400 millimeters um, all up. And um, so that's pretty much how you know, how you get it. And um, it's really easy to charge up. So you can charge this on any kind of um, USB source, C source. So if you've got a mobile phone charger, um, if you've got a, um, a, a laptop uh, power supply, for example, it has USB-C, it will charge on that as well. The way that I charge these in the field is to use one of these. Uh, so this is a, a very typical um, USB battery pack. It's, uh, I think it's about uh, 15,000 milliamp power has two, uh, two uh, USB outs. I just use uh, a standard cable, plug the cable in, and then you can actually plug this into the battery and actually charge it while using it, which is absolutely brilliant. So, uh, for example, we were out at the observatory for about four hours on Friday, um, plug this in, um, leave this charging, had the heater on, and it was 100% all night. It didn't actually uh, lose power. Now, you don't need to use one of these. If you're only operating for an hour or two, you can uh, throw away the cable and um, choose something different. Uh, just use the internal battery, for example. Now, um, that's pretty much the hardware. So what I will do, let's just uh, let's get C-Star uh, powered on. And I'll show you how the little um, uh, filter uh, fits. So let's just power this. And this will take uh, just uh, a second or so to uh, to charge um, up and get going. So let's have a look. You guys can talk amongst yourselves as well. You're welcome just to. Right any, there, any, there, any, there. any. There is a question. Yes. Uh, Stephen Barnes is wanting to ask or know about the Pro version. If they purchase the C Star now, when it was available for purchase or pre-purchase. Will it come up or will it have the pro version when released? Yes, I would. Um, I'm not expecting. Um, I'm, I don't have this as 100%, but I would be really shocked if there was any kind of charge for the pro mode. Um, ZWO are really, really aware of um, that. And if you look at the ASI Air, um, you know, there's been, you know, years of development work on ASI Air and they've never charged for any kind of updated release on that. So I would be very, very surprised if um, if there is any uh, move to charge for that. So I think if you're looking for the pro modes, then um, sure, um, buy with, you know, buy with you know, fair confidence that you'll get that. Um, the one thing I will say about pro mode is that we haven't, we haven't started testing it yet. We haven't seen what that looks like. Um, what ZWO are focused on right now is getting um, C-Star um, robust, um, get it resilient and reliable, and get them out to you guys and get you using um, you know, the, the, the app. So the app on the tablet here, really, really nice, and you can, um, you can download we go you can download that from the apple store now i want to make a, a slight um amendment to the live broadcast we did uh, last week um this has not yet been loaded to the uh to the android store um it's downloadable as an apk via the um get that at the right level um it's downloadable via an apk 
uh, from the ZWO site for Android. Uh, if you do install it, you're going to need to change some security settings on the on the phone or the tablet so that you can sideload these. Um, but um, you can give that a try, um, and it does run f uh, really, really nicely. And what I'll do is, uh, in, in a little while, we'll um, we'll actually plug this in um, to the uh, camera here and uh, and let you have a look at what that looks like. Now, obviously. We're going to be struggling because I'm in the daytime here. You guys are in the nighttime. But, um, you know, um, there is also no station mode yet, which is something that is coming. And also the Wi-Fi sharing uh, yet isn't uh, enabled just yet. But uh, that is also something that is coming. But we've worked really, really hard to get this app um, really sharp, ready for release. Um, one of the questions that I had uh, earlier today was, you know, do you, you know, how do you, how do you get to a target? And we'll show you how to do that. But CSTAR has uh, gyroscopes in there and also um, it has a magnetic level. So it'll help you basically set the tripod up level, but um, it will also, it does know where it's pointing and um, what, CSTAR will do initially is it will salute if you, you've used the Sky Atlas and actually go to a target and press, you know, choose one, then press go to. Um, it will slew uh, the telescope body around um, to face the right direction and the right elevation. And then it will take an image and plate solve this. So it does use plate solving technology and then it'll do a couple of plate solve to get itself onto, uh, onto target. And it really is accurate. You know, if you go to, for example, I was imaging Centaurus A, Hamburger Galaxy, which you may have seen on the C-Star uh, forum. Um, you put that a slap bang in the middle of the, uh, of the um, field of view box and and there it is you know it is it is center so it is really 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 accurate and um i have to say you know i i had the prototypes from neef um the first images we took of them while good were um you know they're nowhere near the quality that we've got today the 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 updates and changes that have been made in the app from Neef to now is just yeah just 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 outstanding um now we've got dither that is introduced so that's helping with walking noise and the rotation field rotation has been taken care of in the app the noise reduction algorithms have been improved um if you have a look on the c star um ZWO forum, you'll see the image that I took of Centaurus A. That was a 30 minute um, run. So 30 minutes of data. And um, it looks incredibly good. Where previously, you know, five to 10 minutes, you were starting to see, you know, start to see some walking noise and field rotation. That's all been taken care of now. Uh, it's looking way, way better. Anyway, so uh, so you heard it there. You press the button, turn it on. Um, when you're going to use this in the field, um, what I tend to do is I tend to place the uh, the camera axes um, either north or south. For you guys in the north, you'll place it north. Here, I place it south. So what we do, we press connect, and then it's going to connect to C Star. Press join. And there we go. We are up and running. Congrats. Start exploring. And that is, is how quick it is to get to it. Um, so now the screen is changed and you've got it up in the top uh, in the top corner here. And uh, you can access the uh, C-Star um, from within there to change some of the parameters around the config. And... Um, it's quite easy. So with, there are four modes, really. So there are stargazing modes. Stargazing is for uh, deep sky work. And, um, you know, you can access the uh, dual band filters, etc. from in there. Um, there is a solar mode uh, for sun. And that's obviously we'll talk about that with the uh, solar filter. There is a lunar mode. And then um, there is a scenery mode. And people might say, well, that's scenery mode. This is a, 
an astronomical telescope. Well, um, actually, quite a few people have bought one of these because they wanted something that they could take away camping, uh, that they could use to look around the mountains, but also then to look at the night sky. So it's kind of kind of interesting. So anyway, let's go into stargazing mode. So you click stargazing, and I'll show you this on the screen when we actually uh, look uh, look around. All I want to do right now is I just want to use the on-screen toggle, and you can see, maybe not here at all, it's starting to slow. So this is using the on-screen joystick, and I just want to slew that up a little bit there. There we go. Now, um, it's kind of bright in here, but uh, Sea Star is actually already previewing the sky. So, of course, I'm looking at the uh, uh, looking at the um, roof here. Um, so we've got basically a 50 millimeter lens in there, and um, it's a triplet. And um, so this little solar filter that we were talking about previously, um, when I first got this, I actually had put in an adapter on the front, which was basically an M54 to 48 adapter and put two screw holes in here and screwed on a two inch filter. And um, that worked really, really well. However, Tyler, no comments from you. I did have an occasion to shut the telescope with the filter still on. And that that doesn't end well, right? So that's clearly not user friendly, or at least Simon friendly. So, and he's laughing his socks off here. Thanks, Tyler. Cheers, buddy. That's why I'm here. That's he's laughing because um, a, a short while ago I had a small issue with my roll off roof observatory, where the uh, it wasn't roof small closed itself with uh, the telescopes unparked. This is what happens when you have the remote control for the roof in the pocket of your jeans and your fat thighs, press the button and then close the roof while you're sitting inside with the laptop browsing around the night sky to see what you're going to image. I can promise you folks this video is not safe for astronomers. It's not, it's not nice watching. So and he will never let me forget this so just that's that's we do have a couple of questions if you got a minute yes absolutely let's let's do questions <clears throat> okay so we talked about the pro version there's quite a few yep. can the memory be increased beyond 64 gigabytes no the memory is soldered on the board and is not upgradable and you can't either put a uh, USB stick in it either okay um how do the image results compare to a LPI camera on the ASI Mini? Uh, an LP? Oh, uh, like a, a sort of normal sort of um, planetary think, camera. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, pretty good actually, and and, and, I, and I in some respects it's actually uh, better because uh, actually the um the algorithms that are set up the dither etc that is all set up um i've seen you know i obviously use a 585 on um on some of my scopes doing uncooled eaa as demos i think this is as good if not better um it's certainly uh, the results are good and um, the noise is excellent uh, have a look at the c star forum on zwo's website go and have a look at those test images um they've done a real good job of uh with the dither with uh, field rotation with noise reduction um i actually think it's pretty damn impressive for a 500 dollars telescope you know uh, with a 462 um color color chip so I think you'd be pretty impressed by the images, and the the big um, the big uh, test for me was to do thirty minutes. I think you could do longer. I think you could do an hour, and you would you know you would have no problem at all. And you can scan those frames and take this off and process it on a PC. So if you wanted to take this stuff and download it into PixInsight or you know Astro, Astro Pixel Processor. You can do that and then process it off as well. Um, it doesn't need to be processed um, in the in the app. Yeah, I'm waiting for somebody to stack or take a 
you know, a, a 30 minute stack and a 30 minute stack and a 30 minute stack and then stack the stacks. That's, yeah. I'm still waiting yeah. for my C star. <laughs> uh, You'll get right. yours, <laughs> Oh, that's that violin. The world's smallest <laughs> violin. You got, so, you got, you got. You got me covered. Good. All right. Good deal. Yep. So, you, so Simon, there was another question about, well, actually I had a question is how do you extract the data from the actual C star? Um, you can do it the same way. So you can via log in via Wi-Fi, or you can connect via the cable. Um, you can do it either way. So sorry, Bina, you were. Yeah, no, you, you're right. And then you can also, um, save them right to your camera and, or your, uh, your uh, iPhone or yep. Android hit save, and that's right. It's right yep. there to share. It's it's yep. pretty nice. And then okay. when if, yep. I had the occasions where something didn't show up, um, that either I shut down and I didn't get it saved, but the C Star still saved it. You just have to enter in through the through the computer, uh, you know, log uh, connecting in through the PC. Yeah, so these are actually saved on the those are the actual on the tablet, tablet not not okay. actually on the unit. Yeah. Does the right. app prevent the screen from sleeping, or do you have to actually set the screen to non-sleep? Ah, uh, no, you need to set those within the tablet because that is a tablet-driven um, um, setting. So what I've done is gone in here and turned off screen lock, and um, same in my. Um, uh, ASI Air, you know, uh, Android tablets as well. I just turn those off. So you will need to go into the settings and turn off that screen uh, sleep sleep mode. Um, can the C Star do flats and darks? No, um, you would have to set up and do flats manually if you wanted to take flats. It does take darks, um, so. Um, when you get into the imaging mode, you, when you actually start that imaging run, the first thing it does is actually take darks um, there and then so that the darks match the temperature of the unit and um, they actually um, uh, yeah, are saved and then applied internally. Um, it, doesn't take, uh, it doesn't take flats. Anything else? What device is easier to use with the unit? an iPhone or a tablet I w or can you use it with a laptop as well so you will be able to use a laptop if you can run any of the Android um, subsystem or you could use a, um, probably a Mac with um, uh, the Android um, and iOS entries in there sorry not Android but if you can run an iOS app on the Mac um i actually like the tablet um per ooh, personally because i actually show this off at the um observatory and have multiple people looking at it at the same time so i tend to use a sort of a tablet format um very much like i use the asi air and use the big samsung tablet when i'm showing that off at the observatory but it runs just as nicely on a you know uh, on a phone if you want something really really compact you can actually just use the phone as well. But what do you use, Ben? You're, You're muted. Mute, buddy. Yeah, I, I, my dog's going crazy here, so I have to keep the keep the mic mic muted here. Um, no, I use them both. I use uh, you know because sometimes uh, you have to be joined to its network. So when I'm running uh, ASI Air. I'll be using my tablet for ASI Air and then using my phone for hmm. for the C Star. Um, that way, you know, it doesn't have to be joined. You know, you, you, I, it, it did throw me off actually because I'm like, why is my, you know, why is my um, ASI Air not communicating with me? Why, why am you know? I <laughs> sat there and pressed it about half a dozen times. Thought, oh, <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, no, I use both and they all work great. Um, yeah, everything's been seamless. The, the, uh, you know, like when you hook up to your, uh, PC or Mac, it'll just act like another drive. You can go into it, see your files. So it's not like, 
you know, anything else. It just yep. looks like another, uh, like going into an ASIR, really. It just, it's the same, almost the same kind of platform. It is. It's very much based on similar technology. So um, a lot of that, you know, um, the thing that has allowed ZWO to actually build this thing is their experience with mounts like the AM5 and the AM3, um, camera technology, and also the technology behind um, ASI Air. So, you know, combining that into that kind of package has been, uh, you know, um, I, I wouldn't say easy, but the components that ZWO have are already there. It was just integrating this into a um, into a smaller space, um, but um, yeah, that was um, definitely you know it has a look and feel to it that is similar to ASI Air, and that's really there's a good reason for that. If you are um, a newcomer, if you learn um, C Star you can then move on to uh, an ASI Air and it will look very similar. If you pick up an AM5 or AM3 mount, the ASI Air app looks very familiar. The idea is not to keep throwing you know, um, learning curves at you. The idea is to you know, build something uh, that C-Star looks and feels like a lot of the technology that you're going to see on Studio, ASI Air app, ASI Air app and, um, you know, and, and, and continue on that kind of look and feel so that you, as you grow and learn, it, it feels familiar. There is a level of familiarity with it. So cool. Any more okay. Yeah. Questions? They just, they just keep coming. They do. They really do. Yeah, keep, keep, which is keep great. Them. I, I will. Uh, yep. Let's see. Where was I at? Yeah. We want to get through these questions and get Are the darks guys, downloadable? But with the light frames for later processing. Yes. Yeah, they're stored away on the um, on the, the drive. Okay. Uh, can you join the C Star to my home Wi-Fi network? Kind of like a station mode. Not at this point. That is a feature that is coming. Okay. Definitely. That's something I need because I don't like sitting out in the cold. <laughs> especially when it's minus three. You poor kiddo. What about the I sun? I know you got a sun filter there. How does it track the sun? Yep. How do you point to the sun? Give us a little demonstration of that, would you? Yeah. Okay. Let's look at that. So um, let, let's 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 come out of there. Um, as you go back to as you go back to the that's the only thing that uh, I, AS C Star does not stop you doing is pressing the close button um so um solar mode is on the bottom here as well so you can click solar mode and enter solar mode here the first thing it's going to go is warning warning will robinson put on the filter so uh the little um solar filter here is actually really really nice it's actually a little sort of um, plastic housing with a um uh solar film now I don't know what this solar it's probably film is made mylar of. filter. It's an mylar interesting film. one because the oh. image is quite orange, unlike a, That's you know, a normal sort of white, yeah, white light filter. Yeah. So, and that literally just pokes on here. Now, there is something that I've discovered, and I don't know whether Bina, you've discovered this. So, in the top of this little handle is a little hole. Now, I don't know whether this is by design or by, by accident, but if you take C-Star and clip on the filter here and keep that little hole upright, when you pan left, right, up and down, and you get close to the sun, when the sun is actually relatively centered, the light from that hole will actually project down onto the body of the sea star. And you can actually get pretty close with it. I would say, though, if you are going to be a regular solar viewer and you don't want to have to mess around trying to center it, then 
perhaps you would want to invest in a uh, soul finder and then maybe command strip that to the top here is something we have talked about to headquarters maybe uh, do this as an accessory but if you do actually put that on the top and if you look down it it does project a line down the um down the sea star so once you've done that it says uh, basically uh, are you ready installed and shooting it then goes into uh, solar mode and then you can then start to um, move around the telescope using the on-screen um, uh, joystick and um, pretty much from there um, you can basically center the image and then you can press this little icon here which will actually sync the mount to the sun's position and start tracking and actually start um, just following the sun i've actually found it stays very very well in the center of that image once it's running what, what's your experience been you're on mute again buddy yeah, I know. I, I, it was going right there. Uh, no, I mean, it was great. Um, yeah, for solar sun, I mean, I, I left it for like, I think, two hours and came back and it was still pretty darn close. I mean, I, I was impressed. Mm. I was huge mm. impressed. You know, yep. you know it's, it's me. when you get me, Simon, and TJ all excited and, and, and you, you know this product's going to be great because we're all like giddy like children over here just <laughs> loving this thing. So this We have. Just, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. So. Um, so the other thing in here is that you have access to, uh, to autofocus as well. And uh, you can also press this little um, uh, exposure button and you can actually change the on-screen exposure, etc., so that you can actually lighten or darken the image. However, I would say in auto mode, I've been really impressed with it. I hardly have to touch this. It's usually pretty damn good. So I haven't had a... I'm had need to um, to do that. Now, you've got two modes here. You've got photo or video. Uh, if you click video, it'll actually take a video and actually store it on the, on the tablet as well. So you can actually get that to that and actually download that. And what I would suggest then is you can install uh, ASI Studio and use the solar, um, solar uh, planetary stacking uh, app within, um, within Studio and um and just um you know you've got a complete free package there as well now if you want and you want to know what asi studio is all about then do check one our previous video on uh, asi studio and go through the different applications and we'll do a bit of a focus on c star and processing c star as well so so that's pretty much it it's simple to use it really really is what we don't want um is um it being hard for beginners this this telescope is really designed to get people in into astronomy um the other thing here is that um if you see on the top left here there is the sun if you click this it's actually going to give you a whole bunch of information about the sun it's going to tell you the visibility of the sun where it is and when it is and um the current coordinates so the ra the declination the alt azimuth of that um, object as well so this really really is great for the kids if you want to educate them if you want to grow their knowledge about the solar system and the, our skies above us um all the objects in here have this so you can go in actually read something about the object as well that you're looking at so real real great tool for outreach as well um two minutes instruction i gave the tablet to the kids at the observatory on friday night and and they were away you know so really really good so um that's solar mode it, it really really is that easy uh, lunar mode is just the same um once we um once we get a moon back then um i'll have a, i'll have another go at some um uh, some lunar astrophotography again um unfortunately the arrival of this in the last week coincides with new moon so uh, which is here. absolutely unheard of it's been clear eh? here for two weeks well yeah, I don't have anything. yeah whenever 
when is uh, when is new astrophotography gear ever aligned with a clear sky and um, and no moon? Never. Usually, it's a full moon and, and it's you know and it's raining or you know yeah. Cool. Um, so there. And are... then, of course, sorry, 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 Tyler. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Simon. So there's a couple people that are curious about rotation extent to stop a power cord from twisting. Can you limit the rotation on the C-Star to keep it from twisting no. cords? Okay. No. No. Um, uh, so what I do, what I do is um, what you, so the, the, the one thing to note is that C-Star won't keep rotating all the way around. If an object is on the other side of the meridian, it knows not to go past that. It will actually swing around and go the other way. So it won't tie itself in knots. So it is kind of clever about that. It won't just keep rotating around. And the reason being for that is it does have cables inside of there as well. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be wrapping those into, uh, into knots either. So jump into different products. So the Dwarf yep. 2, almost the same, just different. It has the ability to do EQ. Can the Sea Star do equatorial not yet and i'm not sure whether that will be something that will come later on however um i'm not actually sure i would miss it if i can do a 30 minute exposure with no rotation and no walking noise you know I'm not sure what an equatorial mode would give you. I mean, you could, you know, it's 10 seconds, uh, 10 second exposures. Um, it's 10 seconds to limit the, you know, obviously the heating in the camera and, um, and keep the noise down. But for 30 minutes, you go, I, I challenge you, go and have a look at the ZWO C-Star website and go and have a look at the Centaurus A image that I took over 30 minutes. Uh, if, if it doesn't impress you for a $500 telescope, you know, taking 10 second images, I don't know what will, but it was amazing. Um, okay. And um, the fact that all the filters are built in as well is, is absolutely great. So I've been real impressed. Okay, a couple more. Can you tell the Sea Star how many subs to take and it stops when it reaches the number, or do you have to keep watching your screen until you're satisfied with the results? Yeah, it does not uh, yet have any kind of plan mode or any kind of auto run modes, etc. Um, maybe in the pro mode, but certainly in the manual mode, then you are literally just going to have to um, set it up and then let it run. <laughs> I don't know about you, Bina, but I've been absolutely amazed at what you can achieve in five or ten minutes. I've not found it necessary to do, you know, hours of subs to get in it to, to get a good image no no it's it's pretty it's yeah we're all excited man because we i mean it is impressive man i i i yeah <laughs> right I'm like, well, this is great so this, yeah. yeah yeah go go and ha i keep saying go and have a look at the the zwo forum for c-star have a look at the amiga centauri image that i took um that just i nearly fell off the chair when that came, you know, was 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 done that's 5 minutes long and um the the stars in there are beautiful the core isn't blown out you can see definition all the way to the center and uh beautiful beautiful image um I, i've shown a few people of that and they just stunned that it's just 5 minutes so yeah i'm 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 pretty pretty impressed Pretty impressed. Any, any more? Come on, come on, Tyler. Two more. Throw the questions. Come on. All right. Come on. Can you do a time lapse from the solar mode? Last one. So you got time lapse. Does it have a dust lens cover? And what about a mosaic mode? So time lapse, not yet. Um, that was something that they've talked about. Dust cover, no, because um, when you actually put this thing to bed, it actually um, it actually closes um, all the way on here, and you can't actually shut it down with the telescope in this orientation. Every time you press it um, to shut this off, you can do it 
one of two ways. You can press the button on the side and hold it and it'll, sh it'll shut down. Part of the shutdown is it will go to the park position and actually park the um, Altaz uh, arm. Um, or you can actually do it from within the app and shut it down from in there and it will, it will do the same. So, um, and Mosaic's not yet either. That's something that um, it was something that they were um, also a feature that the pro mode was being talked about. So, Okay, carry on, sir. All righty. Cool. Um, so, just some of the other uh, little little things that we've um, that we've discovered um, along the way. So, um, the Sky Atlas is um, exactly the same as the ASI Air. So, if you're very familiar with the ASI Air, then actually looking at the Sky Atlas on the um, on Sea Star, you'll be uh, uh, totally at home with that. And um, the um, the scenery mode that we were talking about earlier on that's something new, but you it, it works the same as the solar and lunar methods really, but it's just designed to uh, to work on terrestrial modes. So again, you can take video, you can take uh, to take still pictures as well if that's uh, that's what you're interested in. Um, you can change the um, there obviously. You, may not have heard it on there but when you turn it on there is a little voice that talks to you um tells you that sea star is ready to connect or closing down uh, you can actually change that sort of um uh level from low uh, to uh, to turn it off as well and um a little bit about um firmware updates they'll be exactly the same way as the uh, as the asi air um Obviously, production versions via Apple, you'll basically do it through the, through the app. And um, I expect once we get into production mode that um, Android will be very, very similar as well. Um, that will appear on there. Um, do, 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 you can actually turn the dew heater on and off as well. So there's a slider here. So if you do it on a cold night, then you can actually turn that on. Sorry, um, Bina, heard you say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, when you first uh, turn on and go to set up, you, it, it, it's going to speak Chinese to you for a little while until you're oh, yeah, fully yeah. Just be ready because you're going to be like, uh oh, I hope this doesn't like end in a repeating sentence or something that you're not going to know because it... it, it <laughs> yeah. So when it yeah. turns on, it doesn't know where you are. And until it's actually um, authenticated and synchronized, um, you're not going to get the English voice. So don't worry. Don't worry about that. Um, what the, what the, I think what else is there to tell you about? Well, I got some so, things to ask you. How about that? Yeah. Go so on Fire away. people are still asking about pro mode. Now, yep. uh, I know it's not going to be available when it comes out or when the customers receive their C-Star. So, yep. again, give us, is it probably going to be an update in the later future that's hopefully, that's probably going to be free? It's not something that's going to come in another unit, you think? No. Pro mode will be basically um, and probably an add-on to the existing, uh, existing app. Um we're not yet 100% uh, sure how that will look or what features are inside there. We talked about, you know, when available, not yet, not yet sure. The, um, the most important thing is that when this comes out of the box, it is robust given the software that we've got today um, to get you going and actually image. And particularly if you're a beginner, the last thing you need is, um, you know, is a troublesome app. Um, I get there is a lot of astronomers are really keen to get access to more advanced features, you know, play with the exposure modes, you know, have access to, to uh, the, you know, deeper parts of the, uh, of the app, um, plan modes, auto run modes, you know, these kind of things. Station, station mode will be definitely part of the standard. Um, still um that's definitely something that we need and um that will definitely come as well uh, the other uh piece of functionality that we were talking about was the ability for 
uh, one person to drive the telescopes but to share the image over Wi-Fi and that was also something that the team is still working on so um, I, I think and I keep reiterating this um, let's get it robust today make sure it really really works and works really well well from what I've seen in the production unit it's night and day from where we were at Neef and um, that will run really really well in the first months the team will continue to add features as we go along very much like uh, asi air so i i think you'll see regular updates to this and the one thing that zw are really good at is actually listening to uh your feedback as users and as more and more people use these there'll be more and more ideas of how to use this uh, one of the questions that was um, getting asked at NEF was, so what about, um, you know, um, crowdsource astronomy, you know, uh, and, um, you know, getting uh, multiple telescopes, sharing the same objects, you know, asteroids, for example, or comets. Absolutely, that's something that um, ZWO are really keen on. And, um, you know, we'll be looking at that as well. That's definitely something we've been talking about even this week, actually. Um, so, yep, that will also be coming. So uh, what you get today is going to continue to develop. Um, it needs some patience. We can't deliver everything all on day one and satisfy every single want and desire that uh, astro images have. And... Um, I, I think it's fair to say that when we originally looked at C-Star, um, we, we, I, I don't know, I didn't think that Astro Images would be that interested in what we're offering here. What I've got on the table and actually using is really exciting, and I actually think it's really, really great fun. Uh, but, it, you know, there, there, is, uh, there is a limit, you know, to what it, what it can do on day one. But certainly for sure, they will continue adding in this. And the pro mode will look uh, look quite different. So, uh, I mean, it was like you the ASI was... Air. And the ASI you Air gave you the questions. basic functions of imaging, guiding, and it's yep. evolved into an amazing piece of hardware that gets anybody going from the novice almost to the, all the way to the advanced stages of yep. astrophotography. Absolutely. And yeah. <clears throat> that's the thing that I mean, I'm 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 the exact same way. I want everything. I want it all there, so I don't have to mess with it. He does. Or, but I have to listen to this every day. Yeah, but at least, well, I can't say too much. I can't remember to power on my mount to work. Anyway, back to the stream. <gasps> I didn't say that. Eh, well. So, uh, Dennis Rogers wants to know can you pick an object directly from the star atlas and go to it or only pick it from the list nope you can um you can do it a number of ways and we'll have i'll i'll put this on the screen in a minute so you can um, use the joystick zoom around go to an object and choose that you can choose it from the sky atlas by you know scrolling around pinching zooming and then going to an object in there there is also the night's best targets as well so that'll also tell you you know um best galaxies best ngc best messier etc on that list as well so you can actually choose it in um in different ways as well so um yeah there's there's multiple ways of actually getting to a target what it will do is uh, when you press go to, it's going to um, note where it's actually pointing and then slew in that general direction. It's then going to take an image and plate solve that. It's going to adjust itself in azimuth and in elevation to get close in, take another plate solve and then generally once, once more and then it's, it's on target. And then it will give you the option then you can preview it you can move it on the screen if it's bright enough you'll be able to see it so if i look at say um amiga centauri that's so bright even a two or three second you know preview um you can actually see this on the screen you can use the on-screen uh joystick just to nudge it um up down left and right to center it where you want and then you can hit 
um, image enhance and then it'll actually start to do an image um, run and actually start to collect um, the uh, image frames. First thing it will do is it will start um, taking some uh, dark frames and then it will actually start to collect the data. So it takes about a minute um, to collect those dark frames and then actually start to image and then um, you basically it'll run like that tracking keeping that object and the stars centered until you say stop. Okay. Um, what about GPS for location? Does it pull it from the tablet or phone that you use? Just like it with the yeah, ASI comes, here? Comes, okay. comes from the comes from the tablet and the phone. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, are there any user service available parts, uh, culmination or replacement parts, or is it if it if it just comes in foobard or if i kick it drop it my kids get a hold of it do i still have to contact <laughs> cwo warranty group <laughs> i have to say i have to say i had i had the most bizarre help desk ticket this week where a guy said my my am5 was in the garden and next door's dog got in and attacked the hand controller and the cable have you got a spare a spare as i like, okay that's that's woof you know when that happens so yeah um yeah he was uh, he was really sort of upset i was like okay that's that's different um so uh in terms of spares we've not yet looked at this um as to what user spares will be available um i would say in you know there is going to be someone who wants to get into this to see if they can change filters around First of all, the filters are square, they're not round. So you won't be able to find filters off the shelf to swap into something different. So that's gonna be a challenge. Um, the optical box and filter drawer is all sealed as well. So, you know, it's gonna take some major surgery to try and take that apart. And, um, you know, of course, you know, once you do that, then you're on your own. And um, we'll definitely have things like batteries, but I don't think that you'll need them. The one thing I, ha I have asked the headquarters to stock as spare parts, filters, the solar filter, because I can guarantee this is going to get left behind, dropped in, you know, paddocks, dark fields, well, yeah, parks. Not, not only the only thing is since that's not a glass filter, the thing that you have to be cautious of is puncture holes. Yes. If it gets a hole in it, you yes. can please do not use it. Please take care of your yes. equipment. If you puncture that filter, yeah. get a new one. Don't look at the sun until yeah. you get a new one. So you don't and, ruin your perfectly brand new Sea Star. And please, when you go to look at the sun, please, please make sure that before you've slewed anywhere near the sun, that you've got this solar filter on. There are no smarts in here um, in to make sure that you know you are protected from stupidity. So you there, need to be you know taking care of yourself before you slew to the sun that you've got that. Is there not a warning? However, it's not going to fall out. It is quite actually quite tight in there. Is there not a warning? When you slew to the sun? There is a warning. When you go okay. to the solar mode, there is a warning on the screen that says, you know, um, you know, uh, have you attached the filter? And so you can't just go into solar mode and actually start. But what I don't want to do is people to start. You could actually say um, be in uh, deep sky mode and actually slew there before you've actually um gone into that solar mode so you just need to be a little bit careful i okay. would hate to see somebody um, yeah. you know destroying their um camera yeah, by forgetting i agreed um what is the ip rating for c star oh that's a good point um yeah. that's a good point i'm i'm not actually that's a question sure for the team. Um, is it on the website I do not think I, so. I don't think it's 67. Um, I maybe 65. Um, but certainly, you know, if you're outside operating on a night, we'll have a quick look and see if we can see if we can find it. It'll be on the Sea Star um, Sea Star spec spec page. Um, okay. And okay. Certainly, being outside. So th this case is actually. Um, a, a kind of double lip 
um, and it does actually fit really, really well. So if you're outside and you actually have dew on there, um, it's not the water, any sort of dew is not going to get inside the case. Um, the other thing as well, there is no electronics actually around the edge of this. So even if anything does get in, um, there's nothing on the side here to actually get in either. Um, but um, if you do leave it at the side and your um, home sprinklers go off or next door sprinklers go off, and that's happened to a few people with some imaging gear, um, then yeah, um, you're going to be in a uh, a bit of a bit of a trouble, but we'll have a look and see if we can yeah. find out what the IP rating is. We'll put that in the um, comments of the video because um, I can't actually recall off the top of my head what that was. I know we've discussed it, and I know it's been it is recorded somewhere. Um, we'll have a look for you. Okay, so next one is: Does it have an LP filter and a dual filter already? No. Okay. No. So the three, there are three filters in there. One is the dark filter, which is used for calibration frames. There is a UVIR filter, which is just used for broadband targets. So if you, um, and these are switchable, by the way. So, um, you know, you can swap these as you like. Um, it's not going, oh, that's a broadband target. So I'm only going to let you choose a broadband filter. You can actually swap these on screen. Um, so there is a dark filter, a UVIR, and then there is the dual band filter, what they call a light pollution filter. Um, it's not really a light pollution filter per se, but it's it's good if you do have a lot of light pollution, but also if you want to do emission targets, like, you know, we have a lot of emission targets here in the Southern Hemisphere, um, you can then swap into that. Or if you've got a target that has, um, you know, uh, multi-spectra, um, you can actually swap them around and actually do different images. And that might be something you can then uh, integrate later uh, later on. So, um, yeah, so there's just the three. In the app, is there the ability to stretch and make curve adjustments? Uh, the only thing in the standard mode is you're able to adjust the exposure. Um, so you can make it sort of slightly darker or slightly dimmer, uh, you know, uh, or brighter as you want, but you can't get in there and actually start to really play with the, um, you know, the stretch of the histogram, maybe in the pro mode, but in the standard mode, no. So Mr. John Keller just wants to make sure on just the sea star on the sun, you manually aim the sea star at the sun or the moon before it will start tracking. It does not do this automatically when you select a solar or lunar mode is selected. Yeah, so what you do, you align it up, center it on the screen, and then press the track button, which then keeps it lined up depending on your position in from GPS. That's what it's actually looking for. Okay. It will actually synchronize your GPS location and the sun, sun rate. Okay. Sorry, now, uh, Bina? I said it's a, it's a synchronized button, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Synchronize. But yeah. Sync. Yep. So something that ZWO may need to think about because uh, Dennis Rogers has a great question. What about thread on filters at the objective? So that's a, that's an interesting one. Um, I thoroughly expect that this. Um, this little filter holder here, I would expect within a matter of, um, you know, a week or two of people having these, some enterprising person will have created the STL file um, for these. So that will allow you to put different types of filters in. So if you wanted a narrower filter, then you, you could definitely do that. Um, and this this holder doesn't look particularly difficult to replicate. It's only a you know it's a diameter with a little um, you know um, a little handle on it. So um, I did actually put um, you know a filter holder on the front of it, but that did actually require me actually you know modifying the front case of the C Star, which is not something I would recommend to your brand new C Star. So um, I'm pretty sure that there'll be some very enterprising people that come up with something in here to actually start to uh, insert two inch filters um, based on a, a little push in um, 
uh, holder, but there is no threads on here, and ZWO aren't going to put threads on there to to do that. So, but I'm sure there'll be a lot of enterprising people come up with some uh, you know some way of doing that. If you have a 3D printer or know someone with one, <laughs> there is that yep. option. Yeah, and I'm sure somebody will come up with an STL file very, very quickly. Hmm. Okay. So Chester uh, Draws is asking, so the progress for the setup is basically to orientate it northwards and then use the go-to to an object and then plate solve. Is that correct? So the way that you do this, I, I personally set it up pointing south because I'm in the southern hemisphere. Um, I, you don't need to actually orientate it anyway. You can just throw it on the ground. The gyroscopes and compass in here will orientate it. I tend to do that just so that I am, you know, when I start, I'm actually just straight away pointing at the south. Um, but that's just, you know, for my own benefit. You don't actually need to do that. You could just turn it on. It will rotate around knowing where it is. And from the Sky Atlas, you can basically... Um, choose an object, it will rotate around, it will read the compass headings, um, it will read the elevation using the inclinometer, and then it will plate solve automatically itself. You don't need to do anything around, you know, uh, choosing an object and then going in and plate solving. The one thing that you will want to do um, is to initiate an autofocus. Um, if it looks a little um, a little off in terms of focus, then you can just run that autofocus yourself manually. There is no part of that that is auto in the, um, in the capture process. Uh, to be honest, uh, it's something I do very occasionally. Um, if I change filters, I tend to do that. But um, even changing filters, it, it doesn't change the focus much in my experience. What, do you, what have you found, Bina? What's your, been your... Yeah. Very rarely does it seem to drift out or that I need to hit it very much, but I think yeah. I've, I've seen maybe once that it, you know, but I also, you know, I might've set up on some passing clouds or whatever I might've had in there. So, but otherwise it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. been pretty spot on yeah, too, as for the focus uh, point on it too. Yeah. I tend to focus at the start and then just, just leave it. Yeah. And that's it. It's very, very simple. It, it, it is designed to literally take out, I, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not kidding here, you can take it out of the box, press on, uh, a minute later or so this thing is uh, ready to connect. You connect the uh, tablet application, you can open the Sky Atlas, choose an object, press go to, and it will be, it will be off. And within you know, a couple of minutes, you'll be actually starting to capture data. It is really that quick. Um, it is, yeah, simple, so simple. It's brilliant. And um, I actually, I, I, and look, there are so many different, you know, uh, types of these digital telescopes, you know, on the market. Um, the one thing that I've noticed about them is that they are slightly complex to set up. And even one of the guys that came to the club on Friday had a dwarf too, did not seem to be anywhere near, and that's not throwing rocks at dwarf, but you know, this compared to setting up the dwarf seemed, you know, quite, quite different. Um, certainly he was, whether it was him or whether it was the dwarf, but he was, you know, having to set it up and mess around with it. And, you know, I pressed the button, connect, choose an object, Go to slews plate solves on target. Press image, and it's and it's running. It, it really is easy. So, so DJ, um, he's curious if we'll be doing a video on using the C Star for the 2024 solar eclipse, on how to take a solar filter off and change any settings during totality. How do you and how to video the event from end to end? Now, unfortunately for Simon, he won't see it, period. Sorry, <laughs> buddy. But <clears throat> Thanks. where I'm located, or well, let me rephrase, where I'm go hoping to go uh, is where, it's called the Crossroads. <clears throat> uh, Explore Scientific has an event set up for the annual and the total 
we have a wonderful professor that's here at the local community college has land in Lakey where the actual totality and the annual will cross literally straight overhead now if I acquire or buy a sea star in time I can try to set that up but it also depends on if I'm allowed to go that's the other thing yeah. um, if not then I can try to set something up here uh, where I'm located in Arkansas it won't be complete totality but it will give you the basic premise on how to do it um, hope here please yeah let me rephrase Simon will show us some of the settings that we can use here in a second we'll have him broadcast it on the screens um, that way everybody can see on how it works um, and go from there so Simon you I'm quite sure TJ that? will be um, uh, and, doing some yeah. tutorials for this as well for sure that is true yeah. Yeah. Um, He's, he is Mr. Solar versus me. yeah he is Mr. Solar uh, will the Sea Star have a community to live stack multiple users at a given target live? That's exactly what we were talking about earlier on about that sort of um, you know um, social astronomy. Um, you know, having um, a whole bunch of people with Sea Stars then sending in data to create uh, single um, single images. So that is something that ZWO are looking at, particularly for um, schools and students and um, interested um, astro images so yeah yeah that is something that they are look actively looking at um philip wright asks you mentioned the sensors and compasses do you have hang on i'm trying to read do you have to be wired or wired calibration for the compass like you have to figure eight on a phone oh when you do the figure eight on the phone okay no, All right, so once you turn no, it on, no. it, it, it just kicks on the compass and it knows exactly where it's at by the app. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so uh, a, 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 your tablet is providing GPS coordinates. Um, there is an inclinometer in here, and um, the app will tell you whether your sea star is level and help you level the tripod, um, depending on the ground that you're on. Um, when you actually go to an image, uh, it starts to rotate. It knows where it's pointing in terms of that compass and will get close to where it needs to be. There is an inclinometer in here so that it knows um, the elevation of the um, arm and um, will get you close to where you need to be. Then it takes an image, plate solves that, fine tunes it, plate solve, fine tune, and then gets you gets you onto target. So you know you don't need to start sort of, you know, doing figure eights and, you know, to to, to get the calibration in the Can compass. Can you do those dance moves again, please? There it is. Okay. Um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Keller is asking, when you had to use the dew heater, how much did that shorten the observing time from six hours? Okay, so uh, actually not not a huge amount, believe it or not. Um, it certainly it started to, you know, obviously the battery started to discharge uh, faster. I, I would suggest you're probably down to maybe four hours if you have the dew heater on. But this is where this comes in. So, you know, uh, if you take this uh, cable, plug it into here, and then if we turn that around there, uh if you, you take the battery pack strips, like uh you could even do command strips on the back of that and attach that to the back yeah. there yeah right like yeah you could do it. wouldn't it yep. all move and so, so yeah cool so you can actually do charging while you're in the field even if it gets low with yep. a little it's now portable it's now back. it's now charging yep. and on the screen the of lights. the app the um the charge indicator has gone green and you can see the charging symbol and that will actually start to um to uh, increase and what i did find that is in this setup with the battery pack and even with the dew heater on uh, it was still actually charging the battery and not discharging it so that was actually that's actually quite good and um yeah, you can keep charging it as much as you want using the you know battery pack. So this is a fifteen thousand milliamp hour ones. I didn't even dent this in four hours at the observatory. So, but how does it do in the cold? 
because Dennis brings up an excellent point that most battery packs don't like cold. Didn't find any didn't find any issue with this one uh, at all. It was sitting on the ground and it was still it was still pretty good. Uh, okay. This is actually I need to get another one of these because this is actually the battery pack out of my heated jacket, and um, <laughs> I, I I I felt a little cold on Friday. Sea Star was nice and toasty, but I wasn't, so I need to get another one. <laughs> okay. I like my heated jacket. Don't don't mock me. You're little. It's we cold know. out there. Yeah. It's winter. Put some meat on your bones. Anyway, uh, Ascar Astronomy. We will have totality, oh, sorry, totality in Russellville, which that's about an hour and a half from where I live. And that's Donnie and Donna, if you didn't know, Simon. Um, oh, hey, Donnie. Hey, Donna. And Mason is wanting to know how the planets look through the sea star. So um, I have to say that um, this is not a telescope for... For planetary so on friday we did have a look at saturn and um it isn't it isn't very sharp it, it's too it's too small a focal length for one and so um you end up with just a very very fuzzy uh, you know i looked at saturn yeah you could see it was saturn it's got a you know a ring and you could see you know the some moons off it but it's not it's not as sharp as you using a you know a full blown you know um, long focal length telescope. Sure, you can see it. Sure, you can see the moons, but uh, yeah, it, it it wasn't fabulous. Um, much better on the moon. If you're interested in imaging the moon, this thing is sharp. It really, really is nice, and um, you can get a you know a full disc image of the moon and uh, get some really, really good features. Now, the one thing I did was actually uh, took a video off this and then um, chucked that into uh, the um, ASI Studio package and, and actually stacked it in there, and that was really, really nice. So since I plugged that in, we've gone up 2%. So, you know, it, it charges reasonably quickly. So... Okay. Um, so I would say, yeah, point? if you're looking to do planetary other than the sun or the uh, the moon, which are you know good size, then yeah, it's not really gonna it's not really gonna float your boat, to be honest. Uh, what about uh, car jump car jump starters as a battery pack for charging? Uh, no. Sorry. Uh, because you need to be USB voltage, uh, so it's not 12 volts you're looking at, it's just a USB voltage. But if you can find a USB, um, 12 volt USB charger, some of these battery uh, car battery chargers also have USB um, outlets on them. So if it's got a USB outlet on the charge pack, for sure. Um, if it's 12 volts, then you're going to need some kind of intermediary to get to a USB 5 volt voltage. Um, so, um, but these things, these things are, these things are dirt cheap. They really are. And you could take one of these in your pocket or in your, in a backpack or even what I do is actually chuck it in the bottom of the case and leave it in there. So, um, then you don't have to forget it, uh, you know, which I did one night, uh, taking it outside. But um, you, you can, um, yeah, any 5-volt USB supply that's got a, you know, amp or 2 outlet. I think the outlets on this thing are 2 amp, 2.4 amps or something like that. So, but it's more mm -hmm. than adequate to charge this. What about a fast charge? Does, will it have the capability of that? No, it doesn't have fast charge, but it is fairly fast in the way that it charges. So I'm now up 4% on this since we've been, we plugged it in. Okay. So it's 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 pretty quick. It is pretty quick. So, do you have the ability to show your screen on your camera? That way we can. Yeah. So, are there any uh, before we swap over? Is there any more questions about the hardware, tripods, any anything before we swap? Not that I can. Not that I'm noticing. No, I believe I covered them okay. all off. If so, it does change, uh, I will let you know. Um, let us swap over. Um, I need to jiggery around here a little bit. Now this is going to be a um, test, folks, because he planned this at the last minute. Uh -oh. Shush. <laughs> jiggery. Shush. Jiggery. 
Oh, Jim Jiggery. Jiggery. Jim Jiggery. Jim Jiggery. Jim Quiet Jiggery. The <laughs> Quiet Quiet the wow. I'm insulted. Get Jiggery with it. So, Beaner, what have you found with uh, the Sea Star to be possibly the most troubling straight out of the box? Anything? Uh, you know, I think the solar at first, but I mean, that was really, um, you know, just because it's not, you know, there's, it doesn't have the programs to auto center on, on the sun. So it was quite a bit off. But, I mean, really, I just slewed over to its general direction, and I found it within 30 seconds. Um, really, don't think else. It's really um, throwing me off on this thing. Okay. I mean, like, it's, we've all been loving this thing. I mean, every, every, every morning we all get up and start throwing images out, and we're just... <laughs> Perfect. Um, so, there folks... Me and Frank are going to go away off the screen. That way you can just focus on the sea star and all in its glory. Uh, Simon, real quick, how is it to or with wind? Is is, is it susceptible to tipping? N no, no. What, what's what been really good is that um, I was actually using this and imaging in um, a really um, windy night. And um, because it's got such a little um, tripod and a little... Um, footprint. Um, certainly, I was imaging where my big um, my big telescope, like on an AM5 on the 107, would just yeah, no way you would even try it. The okay. other thing is that you can pick up the uh, Sea Star, and um, you can find a um, find a sheltered spot. So behind a car or behind a wall or a building, you don't need to worry. You can then just image whatever you can see in that particular uh, particular spot. So yeah, you're, um, it's it, it's really quite good. All right. So, so uh, I'll, you have I'll the screen just, up, so I you can go. Yeah, I won't go into every single feature and function on here and every single button because we'd be here for another hour. But I, uh, very quickly. Um, so um, once you've connected to C-Star, you've got the ability to go in and, um, and actually look at uh, some of the settings in here. Um, and you've got things like uh, battery. You can look at uh, the actual storage in use and storage available. Um, you can actually clear the contents from here as well. Um, you can turn the dew heater on and off. You can see the firmware. Um, your um, Wi-Fi name, for example, you can actually uh, modify um, the name. You can modify the password. So <laughs> I did have a laugh. There was a picture of some uh, star party in the States, uh, I think it was, and there was um, a list of all these ASI Airs. Not one of them was, <laughs> was, was customized. So I was like, wow, guys, you can really, uh, you know, you can customize this. Uh, you can change uh, 2.4 or 5 gig uh, Wi-Fi to phone uh, if you want. Uh, I suspect this is where in the future you will also see station, for example, as well. And uh, you can see the firmware versions. Uh, you can see this is currently up to date, depending on what is released in the Apple uh, Apple site. Um, and um, on the main page, you've got basically some panels here, the one in the middle here. Um, will tell you what um, what the sky looks like, um, moon phase. Um, it will look at sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset, and the and the highest altitude um, where you are on the on the ground. Um, so I've set up here um, that um, I'm in Greendale. You can set this up if you look at the bottom right. You can see this me button, and you can actually set up. Um, I've not actually logged in here. You can actually set up on the map and uh, set up um, uh, where you are, and you can set up a profile, for example. Um, under here also is uh, language settings and some bug feedback as well, so that you can send in uh, send in reports too. So, and you need to log in to uh, to send these, so that's easy easy enough. But I've, I've um, turned off the network here. Um, 
So that's all on the front page. You can also see the weather on here as well and what kind of visibility um, they've got. You've got the uh, different modes here, stargazing mode, solar, lunar, and scenery, and then the best targets and uh, also rec recommended. Um, you can go in here and choose, um, you know, night's best, uh, for example. Um, I think, so that's you, know, it's, you know, I think it's also important, sir, uh, uh, Simon, is the upper uh, right there is the tutorial. Yes, uh, yes, in here, yeah. I'm not connecting to the network, which is why it's not uh, showing. But so, yeah, yeah, that's it. It gives you a lot of good different tips and and things that, you know, when you're first jumping around, you might not see something or understand how to how to get something. The tutorials there uh, definitely uh, yeah help along. Yep, absolutely. Um, so um, I'll just very quickly um, go into these um, modes. If we go into stargazing mode, that's that's really where we uh, where we probably most people will um, want to be. Now, this is pointing at this the ceiling, which is why it's this blank screen. Um, you can um, slew the telescope basically by using the little um, on-screen arrow here. So I'm just going to slew this down so I'm not looking. That's fine. I'm now actually pointing below the horizon, which is why it's stopped stop tracking. Uh, I'm not going to be able to... Oh, it's probably a bit too bright in here for that, but never mind. That's okay. Um, and then um, basically from here, you can then choose uh, the Sky Atlas. And um, here we are in the, um, in the Sky Atlas. And you can then just slew around exactly the same way as you do in, um, in ASI Air. And then, um, so for example, here we've got uh, the LMC. You can see the field of view box, um, and um, you can basically then center this in the box this way. Press go to, and then the telescope will slew to this. Uh, we'll take a um, uh, take an image and plate solve uh, same way. Um, if you come out of this. Um, you can also, sorry, um, you can also go to this little, um, which is the little magnifier in the top right hand corner. Um, so this is where you can choose uh, tonight as best. And um, you can go in there and actually uh, choose those, um, choose those objects. And now the question will be, well, does it have everything in there? And the answer is no, it doesn't. Not yet. Um, they're still expanding this, and there are things missing as well, like um, you can't put in an RA and a deck right now, but that will uh, that will come. Um, but what you can do is, you know, you can go into uh, Galaxy, for example, and uh, find which, um, you know, which target you want to do. Um, for example, M83, then you can just go to this and actually send the telescope away to it. Um, and you've got the center button here, which will actually center the telescope actually um, on that in Sky Atlas as well. So you can actually get to that quite easy. Um, yeah, yeah. And you can also search for an object here. So if you type into the list, if I type M83, there you go, we'll find it in the list. You can actually then um, uh, go to that directly from uh, from here as well. So um, it is relatively simple. It is relatively easy to use, and it's not meant to be. Uh, it's not meant to be difficult. Um, the pro mode will add much more into that as well. There are some additional um, features in here. You can turn um, the different grids on. So, for example, you can turn on the meridian line and the uh, um, equatorial grid, so you can see where the zenith is, and you can see where the pole is as well. So it's quite useful if you like that. Um, you can just touch an object here. So if you see Hadar, you can actually tap on that object and it will highlight it. You can then actually go to that and it will actually center on that as well and find that. Compass is that you can set up your um, tablet so that it uses the tablet um, inbuilt inclinometer. So you can actually point the tablet at the sky 
um, see what you're looking at in the sky and then actually um, click go to from there. Um, I don't tend to use that much. I find it kind of um, unnerving the way that the, um, the screen uh, bops around because it's, you know, it's obviously being driven off your um, how stable your hand is. Um, so depending on how many um, beers you had the night before, might not be that strong. Um, so yeah, it's pretty it's pretty simple and easy to use. We'll be adding more you know more targets into here as we go along, uh, more details. But um, you know the the, the the tonight's best is pretty good. Um, you can jump in there and see uh, messier objects. So if you're into doing um, messier marathons, you can jump in there and quickly go down the list as well. Um, so once you've chosen an object, um, let's. Um, now, this will be slightly different because obviously we don't have the ability um, to um, uh, to plate solve because it's in the day. So basically, you know, I can zoom around in here, find out where I want to go, stretch and zoom. Here's Karina. Look, look at that. There you go. There we go. And then you can press go to and uh, it will now start to slew and the telescope is actually slewing around. And it is actually slewing to the south while it's sitting on the table here. And uh, it is uh, chugging away. Um, now, I'm going to stop this because it's not actually going to be able to plate solve because um, obviously, for obvious reasons, we're in the daytime and inside. And um, so from there, basically, if you want to start um, imaging, you can do two things. So you've got on here, you've got light pollution filter. Let's stick the light pollution filter in. That will actually cut down that glare. Um, and that actually then um, starts to put in the dual band filter in, uh, in play. You can um, autofocus uh, from here. And this will actually start to look at the stars. It's obviously going to fail because um, it can't see any stars. Um, and it's actually telling you on the speaker as well what it's doing. So it's auto-focusing. It does talk to you. It's quite nice in the dark when you're on your own. Um, you can change and adjust the exposure here just by using the little um, arrows. You can actually make it um, brighter or darker when you're outside, or you can just leave it in auto, and then that will actually close after a second to two as well. Um, to start imaging, you literally press um, the start imaging button it tells you prefer preparing for image enhancement and now it's going to start actually collecting um, dark frames and you'll see here that the percentage will go up uh, where it's preparing it takes about a minute and what it's doing here is actually collecting dark frames um, getting ready to image and um, it's uh, it doesn't take uh, doesn't take too long and um, obviously it's storing those away as well, ready for use later on. You can see that on the top left there, it's tracking is on, it's already in, um, in tracking mode, and um, it's got the object number up there as well, and if you tap that, once it's out of this, you can tap that object and it will actually tell you the information about it too. Nearly ready. And then it well, will actually start. While well, you're waiting, collect yeah, those there we go. Um, there are now it's actually questions. you can see the counter is there. Now it's going to fail because it, it a it's not going to be able to see any stars. Um, so it's going to actually calculate this. You can see on the top right there, you've got the um, um, time calculator, and yeah, it's not going to it's not going to do anything here. So I'm just going to stop that because I can't see any stars. Um, you can actually drop that down. It's going to tell you a little bit about um, Carina Nebula. It's going to show you the um, elevation and uh, position of that. And it's going to tell you right now the RA and the declination and the altitude and azimuth of that object as well. So, and a little bit about it, which is quite nice. So that's pretty much how you image. And that's, that's um, um, pretty much what you can do from within imaging. Um, if you come out of this and go into, say, lunar mode, um, it's turned off the filter 
And um, basically in this mode, uh, what you need to be able to do is just basically use the on-screen display and, um, and um, joystick to actually frame up the moon until it's in the center. And then you're going to press this button on the top right here, which is this synchronized button. And um, it's going to fail because it's going to say, is it in the middle of the screen? And it's not going to be able to tell if it's in the screen. What you would do is have that centered and then press yes. And then uh, what it would do is then start to track the moon and then give you um, um, a locked view. Um, now you can see on the top right there, the battery indicator is at 99%. So that's gone up about 12% since we plugged the battery in. Um, again, you can change video modes. You can change whether you're capturing raw uh, or, uh, or you're capturing an AVI file. Raw is that serial mode. Um, you've got basically um, exposures and autofocus features exactly the same way. And uh, Lunar is the same way as um, the others. You can tap on there. You can see information about the moon. And then you can see... Um, you can see actually here you can actually see the time uh that moon set is and then moon rises again so that's quite um, that's quite handy so if you want to um observe a particular time um you know moon set moon rise for example you can work out by this what time moon set moon rises and then you can see where the coordinates are right now uh 42 degrees um altitude and 210 degrees elevation for me, uh, um, degrees um, azimuth. Cool. Uh, so that's pretty much the same. Uh, lunar um, in solar are pretty much the same. And the scenery mode is pretty much the same. Uh, you can do exactly the same. You can do um, photo or video. Um, you can change the exposure and change the um, autofocus. But, of course, there's no... Um, there's no uh, uh, astronomy modes in there. There's nothing to see, so you won't see any information about objects, etc. Um, that's pretty much it. But you you can jump around these and um, choose the objects that you like. Um, nearby is actually um, set up on a on a on a map. Um, it's not logged in here, so it's not able to retrieve the um, the chart oh actually it's retrieving some of it i think it's probably just trying to work out where i uh, where i am um it's not going to work very very well uh, one of the things on this map here is a light pollution map so you can actually overlay and this is where you need the network uh, you can actually overlay if you're looking for somewhere that is really really nice and um if i just if i just um let me see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn C-Star off a second. And this is now parking C-Star. It's now going to that park position. I'm just going to change my network. Go back into here. Here we go. So now so I've now logged into the internet log on my phone. So you can see here we've got a, um, a, a like AstroNet. Um, it has its own uh, uh, community. And um, if you go to nearby, um, you can see where I am. And you can click on the light pollution map in here and actually start to see if there is anywhere locally that is actually, um, um, you know, nice uh, and away um from light pollution so i'm out here towards this um a place called hororata and uh, you can see that i'm in an, um in uh, a much uh, darker sky i'm down in the sort of two three out uh, out here and um, you can see then where um the nice places are uh, to go and uh, and go and observe from so you can find somewhere nice and you'll note here in New Zealand that uh, large portions of New Zealand are actually in um, very very good skies um, these light patches are actually the um, the local cities and towns up the east coast here from Christchurch down through Ashburton um, Timaru Omaru down to uh, to Dunedin and in Invercargill so 
Um, but yeah, you can see there, there's large portions of New Zealand. And then if you go into the north, unfortunately, the guys on the North Island around Auckland and uh, what we call the Golden Triangle <laughs> in the Waikato, Hamilton, um, you can see there the city centres are not so good, but Central North Island is pretty good. Wellington area is not so good. So you can choose then and find out where to go. Uh, all from within the um, all from within the app, and then um, you can actually see here um, if there is any other uh, people nearby with uh, a registered C star, which is actually in the uh, in the app, um, if they've actually done that. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much it. Have we got any? Have we got any questions, uh, Tyler? Got a lot of questions actually. So. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to find my spot. Okay, so Robbie Rankinshaw is asking, there was a mention of a nudge feature in Astro Mode to fine-tune the centering of your target. Does it ah, move yes. a fixed amount with each tap of the joystick? Uh, no, it depends. It depends how much you actually move it. And I'll try and demonstrate this. I'll turn... I'll turn, um, it's going to be a little bit hard to demonstrate this because um, I obviously don't have anything behind me, but I will, um, I'll try and demonstrate this. But what you're going to do is you're going to move the screen very, very slightly. It sounds a little weird. I mean, um, Bina, you've used this. It's, it, it's quite a strange, strange feature to try and explain. But you just basically are going to move the screens very, very slightly around the joystick. Um, he's probably on mute. I think so. No. no I can't see you. I only yeah, look at my screen I here. So. I yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's like you said, it's. Uh... Yeah. So what what you can do is you can basically move it this way. And this is a kind of a fast fast slew but can you see how i'm actually dragging the screen this is actually slewing the telescope at a very uh, very very slow amount um this is what we mean by this sort of um nudge feature so you can zoom you know around the sky using the joystick using the center uh, the slower, uh, you know, the closer into the center is um, a slower slew. Then if you want really to really nudge it, you can just um, drag the screen across here very, very slightly, and that will actually um, just nudge it onto target. It It's more intuitive actually on the sky than it is actually sitting here trying to explain, <laughs> explain it. Cool. Any more? Does it really create a completely stacked footage? Because that's what they said about the dwarf as well. But unfortunately, the dwarf doesn't do that. It's finding objects, but with bad quality no matter what. So obviously people do stack. So the question is, does it really create a stacked image? And there it is of the Karina. I'm so jealous. Yep, that is a stacked image. That is a 30 frame stack. And that is directly... That is actually just captured straight off the C star. That is no processing, and um, you know that's pretty damn good. Um, so uh, my capture card is probably not um, showing off the best. It's fine. Thing in the yeah, um, but yeah, that's straight off uh, straight off the um, actual device itself um, using the stack and uh, no processing at all um you could actually capture those and then download them um and look at that that's that that is just magnificent that is a five minute image of uh of amiga centauri uh really beautifully if you look at the core there you all the stars are really really nice and visible it's not blown out at all um it's not overly stretched and um let me show you the one I took of it. Here's the Hamburger Galaxy. So this is a 30-minute image of Centaurus A. 
and um, you know, uh, for a five hundred dollar telescope, that is pretty impressive. You can see the sort of big, you know, hamburger in the middle. The kids love this. I was showing the kids this on Friday night, and I was like, you know, I said, do you know what they call this? And they were like, no. I said, this is called the Hamburger Galaxy. And as soon as you mention this, they're like, oh yeah, I can see it. I can see it. You know, the big bright. You know, dusty bar in the middle is the meat, and then you've got obviously got the two halves of the burger buns. But the, one of the things that's really, really noticeable about this particular galaxy is this sort of um, diffuse glow that radiates from the galaxy out into space, and you can really, really see that. It, it's pretty incredible. There's no walking noise, there's, there's no rotation in, because of the field in there. It's all pretty neat and tidy for a 30, 30 minute image. Um, that's, you know, that, that, that's pretty nice. So I think you're, um, you know, you could show that to anybody and they would love that. And then, um, yeah, so sun and this is M83. So this is, uh, the Southern pinwheel galaxy. This is a 15 minute image, um, taken, uh, at the back of my uh, house. On the first evening, we got this straight out of the box, no messing around, put it on the ground, choose the object, press go, press image. 15 minutes later, you've got this beautiful, beautiful galaxy, one of the southern favorites. So, yeah, you know, um, here's, uh, here's the uh, Pillars of Creation, very, very famous Eagle Nebula. And... Um, you know, this is a 10 minute frame. Actually, I think this is a, no, this is a five minute one, this one. So five minutes just sitting out and, uh, you know, uh, with the dual band filter in. And um, yeah, yeah, look at that. Look at the beaut beautiful actual details right in the center of that nebula. Um, it's just upside fantastic. down. <laughs> no, it's not. It's the right way up. <laughs> We did actually try. We did actually try. This was uh, the new moon um, on Friday evening. So um, this is actually quite interesting because you can actually see uh, you can actually see the Earth shine um, on that. Um, obviously, it was still it was still uh, daylight uh, in the evening, but you can actually see the rim, and um, you can actually see that um, it was actually a video. Uh, you can play the video. Um, you can see, so that, that's a good, here's a good, um, so this is tracking. This is a video, 20 second frame of a track. Um, you can see it's not moving, you know, it is pretty well locked on. And um, you could actually put this into some uh, stacking software and actually play around with the exposure of that um, in uh, ASI Studio. Um, so yeah, not, uh, not too bad. That's a really hard target because Obviously, you've got the very, very bright edge of um, of the new moon itself, that little, you know, two percent crescent or whatever it was, and then you've got the actual Earth shine on the uh, on the backside of the uh, of the object. Now, what we did do is we actually went into uh, deep sky mode and took another picture of that, and you could actually start to see the craters and actually start to see the um, the difference in shadowing on the uh, on the surface as well, which was uh, which was pretty impressive. So yes, um, I don't know what the dwarf does. I don't particularly um, know it that well. So um, just to give you some idea, so this was uh, landscape mode when we um, we first started off. Um, I haven't done any new landscape modes to capturing these. I will actually have a go at this. Um, these are the beautiful mountains that I can see from my lounge window. And as you can see, it's a beautiful winter scene here. Uh, this is why it's so damn cold outside imaging. And, um, yeah, these were the original ones. So if I go into this, you can see, while it wasn't too bad, there was actually some, you know, it was actually, it was actually some noise. And uh, <clears throat> you can also see some walking noise in there. Um, if I go back to the latest Karina image, you can see the incredible difference that we've um, had in putting dithering on, so it now dithers, but also uh, the difference in um, uh, the noise reduction as well. So that's been really, really good. 
So, any any, any more questions, Tyler? <laughs> uh, there is. So, when you change the filter, do you yep. actually see the filter making a transition, moving up or moving down, in the actual field of view on a tablet or a phone? Uh, no. Um, you can see the if I put the light pollution filter in there, it will literally. You can see that there's the transition. You can see the difference in shadow. Turn it off. You can see the image has gotten a bit lighter. Filters back in. Goes a bit dimmer. But yeah, not okay. really. Um, I mean, and you wouldn't be change, and you wouldn't be changing that mid image anyway. It won't allow you. It, it's clever. It won't let okay. you change the filter if you really started. What about sync? What is sync? Uh, sync. When you go back to the Sky Atlas and you pick your target, what oh, is right. sync? You can actually, without plate solving, you can actually slew around to an object. So say if you... Um, so say if I went to Alpha Centauri, and um, let, let's say I chose uh, here. If I chose, here we go, here's Amiga Sen. Uh, you could actually press sync on this. You can see it's got NGC5139. It already knows what that object is. Uh, without doing a plate solve, you could actually press sync button. It will actually synchronize the location of the telescope to the object without a plate solve. Of course, it's not as accurate as a plate solve. So that's what that's for. Okay. Um, what about traveling? Now, I know it depends on the airline um, for carry-on luggage because it's a battery. Now, most yep. airlines you can, with a, with carry-on, you can carry lithium battery. Is that correct? Yeah, I think it depends on which airline you are. But certainly, for example, um, you know, um, I actually checked this in um on my uh, check luggage on the way back from uh from the states um it traveled in there fine i didn't actually have to carry it by hand um i think individual airlines have very very different uh, regulations um about the carry on i know that the team coming from china from zwo when we came to neef really had a big problem um so they actually had to check theirs in and take the batteries out and all sorts but um yeah. Uh, mine just went um, just normal luggage. Okay. Um, how do you set up a five-minute stack? Do you select the frame 10, se 10 seconds per, or is there a timer? No, no. no. When you, when you, if you go back to here, if I do the image um, here, you'll see um, once this is completed, it'll take a minute. Uh, underneath where the timer, the um, the battery indicator is here, you'll see a timer running. And um, you'll be able to then have to keep your eye on that to say, well, I got to five minutes. Um, you know, do I want to stop or do I want to keep going? Um, and then you can um, either turn it off from there. There is no sort of timed run at this point um, so to say, I want to do this for five minutes, keep going. So it, the, the longer the, the longer you image, the more detailed, the more just whatever you're trying to image yep. shows. Yeah, this just like a, any, just any like any astrophotography um, astro stuff. Yeah, more okay. data equals more signal, less noise. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Um, and one of the things that I was interested in, you know, obviously was about walking noise, and you know, obviously if you start to, you know, get field rotation because you are using an alt azimuth uh, uh, mount, um, you can start to get field rotation where you actually get rotation of the image because um, you know. Um, you're using it as mouth and it's not tracking the um, equatorial uh, rotation, you know, uh, sidereal rotation. So, okay, uh, here we go. Um, <laughs> this is now pointing. This is why this yeah. is pointing at the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> so the last question, and then we need to wrap it up here. Um, will the C star be able to find and track comets? Uh, that is something that they're looking at. There is a commentary database in the ASI Air, and that needs to be transposed into uh, into here. Um, so uh, yes, that is something that we are actually looking at including. And I'm just going to quickly change cameras again. So just 
please bear with me while uh -oh. I move He's this back. Going to hey! <laughs> oh, so God. cool. I hope everyone got a chance to see what they pre-ordered, and I hope it was everything that, that they wanted. Again, I'm still <laughs> waiting for mine. Oh my, he, he, honestly. Broken record. Like broken, rec broken record. Broken like record. Broken record. Um, um, Bob oh. Waterfeld yeah, yeah. says, don't close the roof. Oh yes. Yeah. Don't close the roof. Don't close the roof. Yeah, that's really, that's, that's, that's really bad when it does, it don't that. I'm struggling to get my camera back up. Well, uh, it does happen. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> And there he is. Look at so handsome, so little. I need a cam I need a capture card with more thoughts on it. Yeah, well, you're getting there. So, <laughs> do you guys have anything, or do you want to tell these wonderful people what to expect, oh. when to expect? Because that's been also been a question. When am I going to get my C Star that I pre-ordered? Now I know uh, some companies have them, theoretically in their inventory but when will they ship from zwo so there is a few people uh that the dealers have a demo unit uh with them um it is not yet on uh shipping um but um the inventory is in production we're not far away i don't know the exact date but certainly um you know um it won't be that far um, I would say a matter of weeks rather than a matter of months, but I don't actually have a physical date. I did try to get one, and uh, nobody would tell me. So um, just <laughs> I think like they're just ZWO. a little bit worried. Just want to make sure that this actually works right. Correct. Um, yeah. it, it's not. It's not far. That's for sure. So the fact that we've got production units, Beaner's got one, TJ's got one, Tyler didn't get one. Oh, did I say that out loud? I am sorry. <laughs> You are mean and short. If you look at our videos, at Neef, you'll see that it is like, you know, little and large. I can tell you, when this guy gives you a bear hug, it's like, you know, being you, squished. What was, the, Peter, what was the Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Danny DeVito movie? It's exactly oh, what it was. Twins. Yeah, twins. Yep. Twins. We look like twins. Please. As as that movie. But anyway, guys, I hope you are satisfied with the wonderful presentation that Simon has given us. Uh, let's see. Hang on, Dennis. Well, uh, what we'll was do told? lots more videos. Um, we'll definitely have more videos coming, and as soon as we get more information, um, I know the other thing that people are desperate, desperate to know about is. Don't this. you dare! We'll do. We'll do a video on this. Oh, you don't have one of these either, do you, Tyler? I am the low man on the totem pole, folks, and this is what happens to um, people on the totem pole. Well, we'll have some information on this soon. Um, this little baby was hung up because of this, um, but this is very, very close to release, so um, there'll be a focus back on this very, very soon. Obviously, the camera angle adjuster, there's um, the basic um, uh software is in the asi air in terms of cam camera angle adjuster it just needs the interface and the uh, mechanics to actually um do this um using the computer that won't be far away excellent so that's something else to look out for excellent well guys any I last any last questions anything no sir yep. your time has thank been thank you very, very much remarkable. guys for joining me thank you very much for joining us in the your saturday evening I hope you've enjoyed it. Tyler, any last words? Ooh, there's a good one. David Springer wants to know about manual focus, which I don't think the C-Star has that ability. Does it? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. It will there you do. go, David. A pro mode, for pro mode, there's absolutely um, the ability to do that. We've already seen that in some testing. So, um, yeah, keep a lookout for pro mode. That will have... But to be honest, I haven't yet found a need to access it, really. Makes sense. Guys, don't forget to follow us here at AstroWorks for all your 
Sports Imaging Hobby Enthusiasts. We are here to help beginners get started. We're yep. trying to make this easy for everybody to get you to image. That's the whole goal here. That's what we strive for. So make sure you give that that follow button, as Simon says, a thump. But, you know, New Zealand people, they're Tyler weird. They're, the they're, things. their bathroom the water goes in the opposite direction. Give that direction. subscribe button a boop and give us a like and come and join us. And then you'll get up to date with all of the latest videos that we're doing. We've got a load. Uh, there's something coming this week. We're going to be doing a video on uh, AM series mount upgrades, software Ooh. upgrades, because so many people have shouted about that. And that's going to closely follow with a video on a guide scope focusing. Yep. Something I never expected to do, but we've got a video on that coming soon. And um, if you've got any questions about uh, your ZWO products, or uh, if you're getting into astrophotography and you want to know more, then do message us on the ZWO page. You can reach us via the support line on the website, and uh, Bina and I will um, uh, reach out to you and, and, and help you. And uh, if you've got any questions about Explore um, products, telescopes, etc., then um, Big T here is also um, uh, your man to talk to. I know and nothing. And Exos Mounts as well. He's an Exos Mount expert. So we can definitely help you out with that. So please, um, you know, message, put those uh, in the comments as well. If we haven't answered something here, then please post it below. We'll try and find out. I need to find out about our IP rating as well. So it's something I'll have a look at. So um, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been great showing you C Star. We've had a real ball testing it. Uh, I think for five hundred dollars, this is the most fun you'll have in a long, long time. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Bina. Appreciate it. Thanks, folks. Appreciate you joining us. Stay tuned for more AstroWorks stuff. We'll be back soon. Clear skies, everyone. Bye from New Zealand. Yeah.